Hey, what is going on? I thought I'd jump on here today in the middle of the day and do a quick live stream about my solar production for March of 2025. And just to kind of show everybody that, you know, you can eventually over time, because I've been working on this for several years, build up your system enough where you can get over three megawatts of solar production in one month. Oh, let me turn the sound down on this thing. All right. So, hey, if you're interested in knowing my exact numbers, hey, go ahead and stick around. And I, then I'll talk about my system and tell you what I'm using to pull in all this solar. And, you know, if I can do it, hey, anybody can do it. I'm in southeastern North Carolina. So March, you know, hasn't been the greatest month in the world. I've had a few uh, good days and stuff, but there's been a lot of cloudy days. But the one thing that has helped me improve my solar production is just having enough battery storage to put the solar in when you do have it. So on my main part of my house, now I have 100 kilowatts of uh, 100 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And then here on my building here, I have 43 kilowatt hours of storage. So I combined these numbers between the two, between my house system and my building here system. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you over here and show you on the uh, EG4 monitor app, kind of what kind of production I got. So as you can see right here, I just have, I have three 6,000 XP. So this is one of my inverters right here. Let me see if I need to make this a little bigger. Is that a little easier to see there? And you can see right there for this one inverter, my production for the month of March was 490 uh, kilowatt hours. And so let's jump over to the next one. All right, we got somebody that became a channel member. Hey, thanks a lot, Robert S. Hey, we got 836 uh, kilowatt hours on this other inverter for the uh, month of March. Of course, I have both MPPTs with uh, solar panels going into it, and I'll talk about my solar panels I got here in just a second. Then on my uh, last inverter here, as you can see, I got another 897 kilowatt hours of uh, uh, solar production. So combined with all of those, it was 2,224 uh, kilowatt hours of, of solar production or kilowatts of solar production. I'm saying hours because I'm talking about batteries as well. So kilowatts of production. And then here on the building itself, I had, let me see if I can pull that up as well. Let me go over here. So I've been running the flex boss for a few days here and there. So the production for this for, um, the third month of March was 135 kilowatts. So, and I have only had that on there a couple of days, but then the other inverters I had running my building were a 12,000 XP, which let me see if it's online here. So I made another hundred and another 116 uh, kilowatts from that array, from that inverter. And then the 12K, which had the most solar on it for the building here. See for the month of March, I had 559 kilowatt hours. So all of that combined is going to be 3,035 kilowatts of solar production for the month of March, which is awesome for March. I mean, it's not even the summer yet. So, you know, and all of that is just because I added that storage of battery power to my system and I have more to put in. So let's go over here and go look at who's in the chat really quick. I don't want to miss anybody in the chat. Let me click on this thing. All right, we got Robert S. who just became a channel member. Hey, thanks a lot, Robert. Let me go back to me real quick. Definitely appreciate it. He's saying hi on here. Then we got Sammy saying, uh, hi, Rodney. Good information. Hey, I definitely appreciate uh, you guys showing up here in the middle of the day. Kind of a last-minute stream. I know most people are going to be working and stuff like that, so they're not going to be able to come during the middle of the day for a stream. But I figure I'll put this out and then just leave it up as a video to show people what my solar production has been. And let's go ahead and talk about some of the equipment that I have. Basically, on the main part of my house, I have 28 uh the solar ever, basically 450 watt panels, which is about a 12.6 kilowatt array. And then I have 12 of the Hyundai 305 watt panels. That's on my tilt array. If anybody hadn't seen that video, you can go check that out, check that out as well. That's about 3.6 kilowatts. So total on my house, I have a 16.2-ish, just a little bit more than that. Uh, kilowatt array so definitely not a bad size it, you know especially for any kind of normal size family for those that don't know i have a pretty big family we got 11 people staying here still got nine kids staying at home so you know we use quite a bit of power 
And then on my um, building here, I have eight of the Hyundai 305 watt panels. So that's about a 2.4 kilowatt array. Then I have 12 of the Sirius uh, panels, the 415 watt panels, which is about a 4.9 ish kilowatt array on my uh, DIY pergola. If anybody hadn't seen that video, it's a pretty cheap way to, to build, I guess, a ground mount that's kind of overhead, that has some overhead cover. Some people love it, some people don't like it, you know, hey, but it just is what it is. I wanted to try it as cheap as I could to see if it will work. And it's withstood like 50 mile an hour wind so far, so it's been good to go. You can always add more bracing to it or bigger posts and stuff like that. I just tried to do it as cheap as possible and it's working for me. It might not work for everybody. So let's go ahead and jump back over here to the comments to see who we got in here. Hey, we got Betty. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Looks like we got uh, Tony in here. He says, thanks for the info. Hey, I definitely appreciate you showing up during the middle of the day here. Extreme window tinting saying, uh, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? And let me see. Crazy how power goes up so fast from March the 1st to April the 1st. Indeed. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a lot better than January and February for sure. Even with some cloudy days in there because the days that were sunny were great. I think there was one day that, you know, my batteries, I got pretty low the night before and then it was sunny the next day. And I pulled in, I think, 167 kilowatts in one day. And I think that's the most I've ever seen get pulled in because both of my battery banks were kind of, you know, depleted and needed to be charged back. So it's not that I couldn't bring that in. It's just most of the time I didn't have enough place places to put all that storage. So especially on the building, I think I was charging my car that day. So it was uh, going down and solar was going up. Uh, Nicholas, hey, what's going on? He said, what's up, man? Glad to catch your streams in person. I thought I'd let you know I finally finished a solar golf cart. It's pretty sick. Hopefully you finished yours. Yep. Uh, my parents, you know, golf cart is working. And maybe I need to put out some more videos on that after I added the batteries. I thought I did a follow-up video, but I might not have. Maybe I didn't. Let me see here. Sammy says, how many uh, kilos and battery storage do you have? I have 145 kilowatts. So I have about 143 right now. And uh, that will probably be going up by the end of the year. I'll probably try to increase that a little bit. So I have plenty for the winter. I would love to have like 120 on my house. And then maybe like 60 or so over here on the building, just in case we have some cloudy days or days you're not getting a lot of sun, of course. And, you know, you can store a little bit for maybe two days. And let me see, Robert, looks like you might have a question on here. I'm, I'm not going to stay on here a long time. You know, we're kind of talking about my solar production, but I'll probably stay on here just a little bit if anybody's interested. It says, Rodney, what would you say your average daily draw is on a household with 11 people? I'm using 30 to 50, and that's with two people and two EVs with electric water heater. It just depends on the weather, really. I would say anywhere from, you know, 65, 70 on a good day, and the, and the temperature is kind of mild to, you know, 120 on during the middle of the winter. Or it might be a little more than that, but it just depends on if I'm charging my car or not, so anywhere in that range and that would be just on my house and then you know i try to charge my car off the building here so we'll just have to see this winter i'll try to keep better track of it betty says how big is your shed that you have your uh three 6000 xps in um i think it is i think it's a 12 by 16 i think and uh I may be off on that a little bit. I've had that thing for a long time, so I can't remember. I think it's a 12 by 16, though, Betty. Um, Silverado says, hi from Wisconsin. Hey, what's going on? How is your solar production in Wisconsin right now? I know you probably have uh, a weather that's not as good as we've been having here recently. It's been doing pretty good. Michael Adams, hey, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Let's see. Prep Solar 787. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Hey, if anybody's got any questions, I'll try to stay on here for a couple of minutes and answer your questions. But basically what I've been talking about is my solar production for March of 2025. And I'll go ahead and restate everything. I pulled in 3,035 kilowatts between my house system and my building system here. So I just totaled them up. And just for the house, I pulled in 2,224 kilowatts. Let me go back over here and show you the production on the screen, I guess. Excuse me for a second. 
I thought I was about to sneeze, but I didn't. All right, let's see here. Um, let me go back over to my house system and show you that. My house. And so for this one inverter here, as you can see, one of the 6,000 XP's, I pulled in 836 kilowatts for anybody that missed the beginning. And then this one, I pulled in another 897 kilowatts. And for this last one here, I only have one MPPT on it. That's the tilde array, 490 kilowatts. So not bad. And a lot of times my batteries were completely full. Let me see if I can find that part and show you. So let me come back over here. So I'll, I'll try to look that up while I'm talking. But basically, a lot of days, my batteries were getting full, like where we just didn't use a ton of power, and they were getting full by 2 o'clock. So I could actually pull in more power than that if I had more battery storage. So to me, the one thing you got to do, especially if you have a big enough array, is continually adding on batteries as you can afford them or just get plenty up front. Because to me, you don't want to waste that power. You're going to have good days of solar and bad days. And if you have the battery storage, you know, you had the money to buy them. I know they're not cheap, but if you had the money to buy them, go ahead and get those batteries, store that battery power from two or three days ago. And then, you know, you have two or three days of clouds. Hey, you're going to be good to go. You're not going to have to worry about running a generator if you're completely off grid or using grid power, which we all know those prices are going up. So, you know, they're not helping us out at all. Let me go ahead and jump in here to the stream again. Bob, hey, what's going on, Bob? Let's see here. Regenerative life. Hey, what's going on? Great off-grid solar equipment video. Bam. Uh, Extreme Winter Tending says, what's production for December 24? Mine a lot less. I didn't have all that prepared. I could go in here and start looking. Let me look real quick. 2024 here. Um, let, me, uh, let me get this stuff ready here. I know it's going to be a lot less for sure. Let me go ahead and get you back over here and share the screen here so you see this one inverter was 305 kilowatts that was my one with the one mppt for uh december of 2024 and let's click on another one then the other one was 375 and i think that this was the month that i had reset the inverters and never set it back so it wasn't bringing in all the solar it should have been because i didn't have my amp set right on it so i'm pretty sure that's what it was 408 kilowatts so yeah, I made a mistake when I was doing an update and basically that's why the production's so low. They're all three shouldn't be the same. My first two should be double what the third one was, but I had the amps wrong. So it only let so much charge. And because I don't pay attention to this stuff and I just run it, I didn't even see it until way later and I fixed it. So, you know, anytime you do an update on your system, cause that's what I had done. I did an update. You got to go in and check all your settings and make sure they didn't change. Mine did. So my mistake, maybe you guys will learn from my mistakes and, you know, be good to go next time. But we'll see this December what we pull in when I have all my settings right. Let me see what we got here. So Extreme Window Tending, what was your uh, production for December? Because mine was showing about 1,500 just on the house. And then maybe I got another 500 here on the building. So maybe it was 2,000 or so. Um, let me see if I can pull up the building here. Let's see, 12,000 XP. And then the 12K. Let me see what I got here. So yeah, on the building, I pulled in about 650 kilowatts. So between the two, a little over, you know, 2,100 uh, kilowatts for the month of December, which was, I could have did more if I had my settings right. It wouldn't have did as good probably as this, as March, but it did all right. Robert says, Rodney, I was able to purchase a few EG4 products this past week before the price uh, shot through the roof. Uh, the 6,000 XP is now almost twice the amount. Yep, definitely prices are going up. So if you can find them cheaper somewhere, I definitely highly recommend that. Uh, here's my signature solar link for anybody that's interested in uh, helping me out whenever they do go purchase something in the future. And also the Flex Boss, wherever it's at, the Flex Boss 18. If you guys are interested in picking one of those up, I have a discount code just for that that you can save a hundred dollars it's save 100 i guess i should type it in the chat here so if you use that discount code save 100 save a hundred dollars if you got a flex boss 100 in your cart and you can also get like free shipping and the other promotions that signature solar is offering as long as you meet those requirements like you're spending enough to get the free shipping and stuff you can you know combine the two and get both of them so any of you guys that are interested in that, of course, it's going to help out the channel, and I definitely appreciate it. 
Let me see what time it is. All right, it's about 1.45. That's about how long I planned on staying on here today. I definitely appreciate everybody for jumping on here and checking out this video. And I'm going to go ahead and post this production information for people to watch later. So if you missed the beginning, I'll go ahead and post this video and you'll be able to check it out. But thanks for watching. And don't forget, we always have the Unplugged live stream on Thursday nights. And this week, I think it's going to be on Adam DeLay's channel. So go subscribe to his channel and Eric's and check us out as always. I won't be there this week. You know, we've got other obligations to attend to. But I'll be back the week after. So thanks for watching.